All right, hey there. I am outside one of my favorite local thrift stores, and I'm gonna take you in with me. We are gonna see primarily what I can find to resell. So I'm hoping to find some stuff that is at a great price that I still think I can sell and turn a profit on it. Um, and then second, we're just gonna look for some cool stuff for my own house too. There may be a few treasures that I decide I want to keep myself, so come along with me. Y'all, I just have so much fun going to the thrift store. It feels like a treasure hunt every time I get excited because there's just no telling what you're gonna find. For example, like this singing fish, right? I think I'll pass on him though. It's a great deal for five bucks. I did find some amazing furniture right when I first walked in, like this oak table at $34.99. That's a fantastic price. I'm really not in the market for furniture though. But if I was, I would have definitely grabbed that and this coffee table because the top of that could totally be sanded down, refinished, and the base painted. This lamp for 15 bucks was definitely a steal too. I may go back and grab that for my office. Another thing that I always do when I'm at the thrift store is look at their used book selection. I think old books are great for decoration and sometimes you can find some really cool ones. I was excited about this book. Um, it's pretty old and it has just some really neat photography in it. And then I also decided to stock up on some really cheap vintage paperbacks. I have another plan for those, but I'll have to tell you guys about that in another video. So it was kind of a slow day, bummer. Found a couple books, some books for my kids, some books that I think I can resell. Had I been in the market for some furniture, there were some cool furniture pieces in there today, but I'm not on the market for furniture today. So we're gonna keep looking. All right, guys, it's another day. We're at another flea market. We're gonna give this one a go this time. Let's see what we find. that I grabbed was this adorable little white hand-painted picture. It had an incredible price on it. And then I also found a piece of Red Cliff Ironstone, which was priced less than $3, so that's a steal. And then these super cute little vintage tiny mini dogs. Uh, I looked through all of them and I picked my favorites and brought them home with me as well. All right, it's time to walk through our finds from my two trips out thrifting, one to the thrift store, second trip to the flea market. I wanna show you guys just a little bit more in detail what we got, um, give you some ideas for maybe how I'm gonna use it, as well as some ideas for how you can use if you have some of these similar things. So I got a cat visiting with me. You might see him wandering around a little bit. Um, okay, this is the first find. Yeah, there he is. Uh, sorry, I know it's backwards. We're filming backwards today, but um, this is an old, it's not quite a hymnal. I, I think it was just more just general sheet music book, but it is definitely church music. Um, got some great patina to it. The cover's in good shape though. Um, it's definitely all intact, but it definitely has that vintage patina. Lots of pages in here. So um, what I think books like this are great for, I love getting old sheet music. If you don't want to keep it intact as a book, you can definitely pull it apart. Use the sheet music. Some of you that may make you cringe to think of pulling it apart, but um, you can use the sheet music in your crafts. You can use it for decoupage. Um, you can use it to make, you know, banners, signs, all sorts of stuff. Or if it was me, I would probably just sit this on a coffee table. Um, it'd be a coffee table book along with a couple other vintage books. Somebody would pick it up, they'd start thumbing through it, 
Um, it would, you know, maybe bring them back to, you know, maybe their childhood church growing up. I just think it'd be a great little book to just sit out and have for your guests to look through. So, and I think it was like maybe 50 cents. All right, the second book that we found at the thrift store, um, and again, sorry, I know it's backwards, but is Europe in Color, and it's a hardback book. Now, the cover is not, you know, in the most excellent shape. It's got a few spots on it, but um, the reason I got it is because it is full of these beautiful full color photos. Look, just gorgeous full color photos. Here's another one. And I think the date on it, let's see what the date is. It's an old book. Um, 1957 is the date. So really it's in great shape for being that old, but it just has beautiful pictures in here. And I love looking at pictures of, you know, this was Europe in the 1950s, early 1960s. Um, looks different than it looks today. So just if you're, you know, uh, a Europe aficionado, this is a fun book to have around. Again, you know, if you're concerned about the cover, just take the cover off, but great coffee table book. If you're just a vintage book person, I will probably honestly keep this for a little while and just enjoy looking through it myself. Um, I've traveled a little bit in Europe, would love to go back, but just really enjoy the photos in here. And I, let's see, the price on this one was $1.67, so great price. Now, moving on to the flea market that we visited. All right, we found some nice items there, not a ton, but the stuff we found I'm really excited about. So let's see, what do we wanna start with? Um, Okay, let's start with this. So this is a vintage uh, glass pitcher and uh, it's Federalist glass. And it, it, this is the starburst pattern. It has a star on the bottom. So these are really highly collectible. It was a great price on this one. There's the cat again. I think I paid $5.99 for it. Um, they're priced you know, anywhere from 15 to $50 on resale sites, Etsy, eBay. Um, but you know, anything vintage kitchen glassware is really popular right now. Kind of crazy. It's just, <laughs> he's going to take a bath back there. Sorry. I hope that's not distracting. Um, vintage kitchen glassware, super collectible right now. People are really enjoying, I think having some of these pieces to use for their entertaining and just, I mean, this is just such a great little size for like your morning orange juice or, you know, mix up, um, you know, some cocktails for a friend and just a great piece. So, um, all right, another find, um, this really cute little hand painted pitcher. Now it's got kind of that ironstone, um, small pitcher look to it, but it's not ironstone, it's not marked ironstone. It is marked that it's hand painted and it's really in great shape. And I think I paid a buck 20 for it. So um, if, you know, lots of white uh, collectors out there, people that collect white pitchers um, in your kitchen, you know, this is a cute kitchen piece. It's a great size to stick, you know, some of your utensils in it, some whisks or your wooden spoons. Great size for that. It's got these pretty blues and greens, which are popular colors right now. So I can easily see this being um, a piece and that just kind of adds a little accent to somebody's kitchen. For a buck twenty, it was a steal. All right. Speaking of vintage kitchen, let's keep going. This I think I paid five dollars for, um, and it is a half gallon milk jug. So the markings on it: um, Furlan's Dairy in Mexico, Maine. Which I just thought that was really kind of crazy that there's a town in Maine called Mexico. Um, just that in and of itself kind of sold me on this bottle. And then on the back side, there's this this happy little guy and he's talking about bringing your milk and it's just so fun. Like I, I definitely didn't live in this era where this is how we got our milk, but and I just think it's really cool. So for five bucks, this was a no brainer. Um, any sort of milk bottles are definitely collectible. Of course, they really range in value based upon their condition. Do they have the lids, the markings on them? I don't think this one is like particularly, um, got any sort of crazy value on it. There's definitely room to make some money. 
Um, but you know, anybody that's got, again, any sort of vintage kitchen collection, this is a great piece for your shelf space. You know, drop a couple, some greenery in it, a nice little vase. It's got some punchy colors to it. It was a great find. All right, this I was super excited about. This is a piece of ironstone. Um, now it is marked, it is Red Cliff Ironstone, which is not one of um, the super collectible kind of high-end brands. It's definitely more common, but um, it is still marked white ironstone. And it's a little sugar pot. It does have the lid, it's missing the spoon. And then I, I do think on the lid, I could tell that it was broken and it's been glued back together. But again, you guys, that doesn't really bother me. Um, I paid $2.50, yes. It was either $2.50 or $2.60 for this, for this really nice piece of white ironstone. So, so many white ironstone collectors out there. This is a great piece for $2.60. I don't care if it's been broken and glued back together. I can use it and put it in my collection for display for just a steal. And it's got that, you know, I don't know if you can tell, but you see the crazing on it, which just really gives it that cool vintage patina. Amazing price, amazing find. All right, these last two are so cute. Um, well, actually, we have three, two more, and then a surprise that I didn't show you. But so one booth had all of these little miniature dog figurines. And you guys, a lot of times these are, this one is stamped from Japan. A lot of times these old figurines, um, they were produced in Japan. And so you kind of want to look for that stamp. But here's a little French bulldog. Isn't he cute? Here's the size. He's adorable. So cute. Any dog collector would love this piece. I mean, perfect little piece for a shelf. Stack it on top of a couple old books. And you've just got this super cute little vignette. Not only that, I found this guy, but then I also grabbed this little guy and let's see if I can hold them up together. His two little friends, <laughs> aren't they so cute? Look at that. So this one is totally doing the little puppy pose and this one's laying down. And then, you know, I guess this is maybe the mom. And so all three of them, and this one is Stamps Japan. All three of these little guys for $1.50. So cute. Such a cute little piece of decor. And I tell you, if you have this sitting out somewhere in your house, people are gonna pick it up. They're gonna look at it. They're gonna ask. It's gonna spark conversation. That is why I like to decorate with quirky little things like this because it sparks conversation. So this set of guys was $1.50. This French Bulldog was $1.50. So these are gonna go into my next Facebook Live sale. Um, we're gonna see if we can add a couple dollars onto that and make a profit. I just think they were a steal. So, all right, my absolute favorite thing though, and I didn't show you guys this in our walkthrough video, and it has nothing to do with decor, but it does have to do with thrifting. My absolute favorite thing that I found while I was out at the play market is this salad spinner. <laughs> So you may be surprised, but you guys, I have been needing a salad spinner for a long time. Like I don't have a salad spinner and I'm just so lazy. Like I literally don't want to make a salad because I don't want to have to deal with getting all of the water off of the lettuce. I'm so lazy, I know. And so I knew I needed a salad spinner, but they're like 30 bucks new at the store and I did not want to pay that. So this one is actually a sharper image. Salad spinner works perfectly fine. It's not gigantic. Some of them now are huge. So this one fits right under my cabinets and it was like $3, three bucks at the flea market. So really, even though we had some great decor finds, this salad spinner is probably my favorite find and I've already made like so much salad. <laughs> I've been buying all the lettuce, chopping it up, spinning it. My kids think it's super fun. So this is actually the winning find of the whole trip, but, um, yeah, we had a fun time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this thrift haul and a little stop in the flea market. Um, you know, it's just, it's exciting to me every time I go because you never know what you're going to find. As always, if you like this video, if you want to follow along with me at Lost and Found for more thrift and flea market hauls, then please like this video and subscribe to our channel. 
We've got more coming. I'm always out looking. Thanks so much for joining me today. See you guys again soon. Bye-bye.